123rd Contact, Pentecost Monday, June 4, 1979, 143 and pages 375, 388. Billy says do you know that I am tremendously happy and glad that you and all the others are here again. Evidently, you are also doing very well. Is everything with your health now actually in the best order? Semyaza says I am also very glad and happy. Sure, my health leaves nothing more to be desired. Everything is now in order. Billy says that makes me happy then your long staying away was worthwhile. Semyaza says sure. But with all of you, all sorts of things have happened in the meantime. Billy says one can, indeed, say that. Semyaza says I also had to find this out, also that you didn't act accordingly, as was recommended to you on several occasions. Billy says I know, you speak of Beetle and Louis, right? Semyaza says sure, it was suggested to you several times that you should speak with the two, that nevertheless, the duty should be fulfilled. Billy says I know, but I just can't do it. Semyaza says yes, you act exactly the opposite, but soon nothing else will remain for you other than to explain everything to them. That will already be very soon. Billy says then there is really no other way. Semyaza says you know that it is so. Billy says then, like it or not, I must bite into the apple, which doesn't taste good to me at all. Semyaza says so it will be. But now to other things besides the fact that you are to talk with the two, there arises a serious problem with Louis, which will not be easy to solve. It refers to here, it can be absolutely certain that he will suddenly make ownership claims, in order to bind Eva to himself, which would be good in no way. For this reason, I will transmit today's contact conversation to you only when these things have largely been resolved. Until then, you may give no exact information about these things in your group. In addition, it will probably also be the case that we will interrupt our contacts until then, until the point in time when everything has been resolved conclusively or to a great extent. Billy says but that can take a rather long time. Semyaza says sure, perhaps even a whole year. But this still isn't certain, it will probably only be a few months. Billy says but that's already a rather long time. Semyaza says it is, indeed, but unfortunately, it's unavoidable. On the other hand, also several group members are faced with some decisions, which likewise should and must be awaited. Billy says you speak in riddles. Semyaza says which I may not officially explain to you, unfortunately, because we may not influence the group. Moreover, you also have to make various and not exactly easy decisions. Billy says in what relation? Semyaza says in relation to your family, on the one hand, because this will, indeed, become larger in a short time, as you do know. On the other hand, the decision stands before you as to whether you should go to America or not. Billy says what would you recommend for the latter? Semyaza says that you do not go there, because it is too dangerous for you. But of course, this opinion is only a recommendation, which you should still think about. It would be better for you if you would be extremely careful because certain persons want to get a hold of you for political and scientific reasons and to subject you to tests, in which you may never get involved. Therefore, be on guard, because you could also be confronted with coercion by drugs and scientific apparatuses, etc. Billy says is that certain? Semyaza says yes, with certainty that is so. Billy says then I had better stay at home. Semyaza says that would be my advice and my wish. Billy says I must consider that and I do not yet know how I will decide. Semyaza says decide well and wisely. And one more thing if you undertake or should undertake larger journeys with flying devices, then never get on such that can carry more than 12 persons. Billy says why that? And you know that long distances with such small airplanes are exorbitantly expensive. Semyaza says that is well known to me, yes. 
However, you should use no flying device with more than a 12 person transport possibility because our probability calculations have yielded unambiguous full values that larger flying devices would be destructively endangered by negative external influences if you would use such. Billy says I don't understand that. Semiaza says it means that if you would use such a flying device then the negative external influences would become so noticeable that the flying device would crash or in some other way be destroyed. This is due to the fact, as you know, that everything that is negative on this planet is always against you in uproar and in the offensive, because the truth is supposed to be destroyed by all means. A large flying device, now, offers a very large attack area and undreamed of storage possibilities of these forces, which could then explosively take effect and also would take effect with certainty. These forces of negativity are only ineffective with smaller flying devices. Billy says I understand. But can nothing be done about it? Semiaza says shielding is not possible, because that would be much too costly. Billy says then that means now, that I can write the flight to America into the clouds, which should confront me soon, as you said. Semiaza says that will be so. Billy says then I have to make up something to keep myself out of it. Semiaza says sure, that is also correct. But now, I have to explain something else to you. Billy says first, I still have a question which seems extremely important to me. Semiaza says well, then ask. Billy says thanks. Already since the beginning of the year, every month, I have observed very strange light objects in the vicinity of the center. Interestingly enough, at the beginning of the year, I also received impulses unknown to me from somewhere, which made it clear to me, for the whole year as to what times these light objects would appear in each case. On the 19th of April, now, I could also make slide pictures of these objects in the early morning hours around 2.23 am. The crazy thing was that these objects, with which I tried in vain to establish communication, by the way, constantly changed their forms. A car's headlights came from somewhere, then, these objects assumed their forms. They also mimicked my flashlight headlight and the yard lamps, and the objects in their original forms looked similar to bathtubs, which were sometimes so bright that they seemed brighter than the sun at its zenith. That is why several films were ruined for me in the middle of the night, due to overexposure. Also, the sizes of the objects constantly changed, so these were to be measured between 5 meters and several hundred meters. Do you, perhaps, have an explanation for this, or do you at least know any solution for this? Several photos appear in German book, to be inserted later. Semiaza says I just wanted to talk about that with you, as it stands in important connection with all of you and us. The objects observed and photographed by you come from the Andromeda areas and these are fine material flying objects, similar to the bio-organic flying objects that you know. In this case, however, it is such that these flying objects are fine material and not bio-organic and that these, depending on preference and need, are generated by powers of consciousness from a very highly developed, human dwarf race whose size amounts to approximately 70 centimeters, whereby I speak of body height. This race, which is even unknown to us, is fine dimensioned and stands in the advice of the High Council, which has sent it here to clarify our interests with you in detail, because it was found that we wouldn't assert ourselves strictly enough. Billy says aha, spies, so to speak. Semiaza says you can call it that after an earthly sense. We, however, call it differently. Anyhow, the High Council became informed and enlightened by these Nabulana, so they are, in fact, called, about the conditions here on Earth and in connection with your group and our collaboration, down to the last detail, even about all those things of joylessness, which we did not submit to the High Council. The consequence of this, now, is that it was decided on our home worlds for us not to continue to operate here on the earth in the old, traditional form, 
which means that our contacts and efforts are officially broken off with an immediate effect. This means, therefore, that also our stations on the earth will be removed and vacated immediately and that we are removing ourselves from this planet, for due to the non-cooperation of the group members the task could not be fulfilled to the extent that was to be hoped for. Of the entire workload, less than 14% was fulfilled, because only the fewest group members tried to change themselves for the better in the best possible form for them, which would have been necessary for the fulfillment of the task. The exertion and efforts of you all were not only sparse but rather willfully bad and without initiative. The reason for this is selfishness and egoism, according to which the individuals were only concerned about their own advantages which now finally led to this breaking of the contacts, which we can now no longer reverse, which means that the fallible ones must vouch for the fact that official contacts can never take place with our humankind and Earth's. Billy says that is bad news. Is that really final? Semyaza says unfortunately yes, and it can no longer change. There is only the possibility of purely friendly contacts, which is connected with a severe condition, however, which most group members are obliged to fulfill, other than two exceptions, for whom it will be impossible. This condition is that the group members settle in countries that are foreign to them, for the complete transformation of their attitude and their emotions and egoism, in order to change their negative unvalues into positive ones there under harsh conditions, before they return after a certain time. The country of America would be appropriate and suitable for this purpose because the best conditions for such a personal change would be given there. Billy says those are unpleasant outlooks. Semiaza says but unfortunately, they cannot change anymore. Billy says how should it go on, then, with our friendly contacts? Semiaza says we will, despite everything, come to the earth frequently, because we cannot discontinue our monitorings, etc., despite everything. On these occasions, we will visit you if possible and maintain our friendship contacts. Billy says at least it's something, and how does it stand, then, with the contact reports? Semiaza says we will continue to transmit them to you, of course. Also, Quetzal will continue to endeavor himself around your health and will try to develop his apparatus and the accompanying device appropriate for it, so he can then, perhaps, install this in the control disk, which also remains, of course. From there, you would then be under the constant impulse effect of the device, so then, no direct connection to your body would be necessary anymore. Billy says and isn't there the possibility that at a later point in time, Perhaps in two or three years or so, the contacts would be resumed in the old form. Semiaza says perhaps, but about that, we are not yet able to decide today. Billy says and what about the fact that I can at least make slide pictures of beam ships again? Semiaza says I remember this promise, and I will also know how to keep it. Billy says and when will that be? Semiaza says when I receive my new beam ship, which, however, can no longer be designated as a beam ship, for it belongs to a completely new technology, which is currently running towards that state with us, where it is perfected. But about that, I will report more things to you when that time has come. Billy says I am already looking forward to it. Semiaza says it won't take very long. Billy says all the better. Semiaza says it will all be very interesting for you, because you will learn many new things again through this. Billy says you know that I am always to be had for that. Semiaza says sure. Billy says you wanted to tell me something just now, before I interrupted you. Semiaza says I have already done that with my explanation about our breaking of the contacts. Billy says you said earlier that, until some or several things are clarified, you all would interrupt your contacts, which could last several months or even a whole year. How does that make sense with the fact that you explained that you all would now break off your contacts definitively and remove your stations? 
Semyaza says you are illogical in your question, because I explained to you, nevertheless, that we will continue to maintain the contacts on a purely friendly basis. For this form of contact maintenance, however, we alone bear the full responsibility, so thus, my father, my sister, Quetzal, Manara and I as well as some others. This means that we are no longer acting officially on behalf of our races and peoples. Billy says oh, and how often will you still come here, in order to visit me? Semyaza says I am not able to predetermine that. But it is certain that there can often be interruptions of several months. Billy says that is hard, but it can now probably no longer change, right? Semyaza says sure, that's right. You taking this astonishingly calmly, however. Billy says I've already feared such things for a long time, and I think that this decision from you all is also justified, because for long enough, you've really raised more than just patience. Honestly, if I had been standing in your place, then my patience thread would have already been torn long ago. I couldn't have looked on for so long, with all the precipitations and constant violations and disregards, etc. Semyaza says you want to talk, because you're the one who tried everything again and again, in order to continue everything. Besides, I don't forget that we often only reversed our decisions because you cried out to us and brought forward facts that always allowed us to continue the contacts even though we logically would have had to end these, and to be sure, before it was able to come so far that the High Council began to endeavor itself personally around everything. Billy says you right, I know. Therefore, I now can't cry out anymore, since it has now finally come so far. But can you still tell me how long I should wait, before you will transmit the contact report to me? Semyaza says I told you, nevertheless, that a number of decisions must be awaited and that everything or at least very much stands in connection with the further growth of your family, because you will receive additional duties as a father, if everything develops and adjusts in such a way as is foreseen. This depends, however, on whether or not new wrongdoings are committed again and once more by the group members, which could destroy everything. But just of that, we are not so sure, because the past years have sufficiently proven to us that many group members are so caught up in their selfishness that they thoughtlessly destroy very much without hesitation. The growth of your family by another two life forms will already release a great deal of uproar and jealousy in the group. Billy says do you mean, actually, that Eva and her child will be the occasion for that as well as the fact that I am not the child's procreational father? Semyaza says sure, and you know that very well. Thus, it is illogical that you ask about that. Billy says you right, but on the other hand, it was already spoken once of the fact that offspring are necessary. Semyaza says sure. But it will not be pure joy to various group members, that you will then newly be a father, particularly because Eva was, before then, still Louis's bride. Billy says I understand. Because Louis won't be the father, that will provide some stimulation for unrest and hostility and even worse things. Semyaza says sure, because various group members are not yet so far evolved that they can understand all of this completely. In particular, their emotions will create a lot of uproar. Billy says I can well imagine that. Semyaza says sure, you are able to do that. But also be clear to yourself about the fact that a lot of nonsense will be spoken, and that which you call, heckling, will be done. In particular, someone will get together with Louis, in order to discuss with him, during undisturbed hours, nearly conspiratorial, nonsensical matters. You will find all this out very soon. Our probability calculations have yielded this, and indeed, very clearly. I wouldn't like to mention the name of the group member openly, because this one should become self-aware of his or her wrongdoings. Billy says but it would surely be better if you would mention the name, right? Semyaza says no, not in this specific case. Billy says as you wish. But if I may drill once again at what point in time will you transmit the contact report to me? 
If it takes too long, then there is the danger that you will forget different things, right? Samyaza says no, the danger of forgetting does not exist, which you should know, because their transmissions are made directly through the subconscious, which is always aware of every detail, as you know. But nevertheless, to answer your question more or less satisfactorily I will have to wait with the transmission for so long until it has been decided that Louis has removed himself from the direct group relationship, because it is likely to give him the greatest difficulties, since he cannot understand that he will not be the father of the child of Eva but rather you. But he also won't understand the relationship between you and Eva, just as many others also won't. Billy says so that means that Louis will go away from the group. Samyaza says sure, if everything proceeds normally and isn't wrongly steered and destroyed by irrationality and the wrong pity of those in the group standing in inappropriate connection with him or other group members some other time then he will soon go away from the group on vacation for some time. Billy says I could gather from your words that I shouldn't enlighten Louis further about the group matters and the contact conversations? Am I correct in this acceptance? Samyaza says you are very perceptive, so it actually is, for the time being. In this connection, in the future, you alone shall have the responsibility to decide to whom you will hand out the contact reports and to whom you won't. In this respect, you have to decide at your own discretion in the future. But it is advised to you here that you make sure that Louis isn't made accessible to any information that is psychologically burdensome for him, not even by additional or other group members. Billy says that won't be so easy, however, because I cannot control our group members. Samyaza says you very well can't, sure, but the whole group itself must act in accordance with the statutes if it becomes well informed of a violation. And it would be a violation of the statutes if a group member would pass on internal group knowledge. The passing on of such knowledge to Louis would also be a violation because he currently never inserts himself mentally into the group and into its statutes, and therefore, already at present, he can no longer be considered as an active group member. Only at a later time can he again be considered as a group member to the full extent, if he has overcome his serious personal problems, which he will also surely create. Billy says once again, you know a damn lot. Samyaza says I was compelled to occupy myself in the last two days since my return, very intensively with all your concerns, consequently, I also had to encounter these things. Billy says then you've ploughed through everything? Samyaza says sure, because due to the appearance of the Nabulana, I was compelled to inform myself about all things in detail. Billy says I understand. Samyaza says surely you understand, which is why it is also superfluous, that I give even more explanations and remarks. Also, I still have many other things to discuss with you, which are intended for you alone and, therefore, may not be mentioned in the contact report. Billy says then we are ending the official part here? Samyaza says sure, but in addition, I wouldn't like to neglect to give all group members my dearest wishes and greetings and to express my deepest thanks to all those who have always striven fairly and honestly to do justice to our overall task and to promote their own evolution in such a way as is necessary. But now to the unofficial, which you may, indeed, present to a few specific group members, but which you may not release to the public until after the turn of the millennium. Billy says it is probably better for me to remain silent toward all group members, because disputes could arise from it if I would prefer some and disadvantage others. Samyaza says you may be right about that. So listen then I first want to explain a few things in reference to your wife and you about which you should not get upset, however, because nothing is to change anyway and it is already determined. So it will happen that in 1997, you will legally dissolve your marriage with your wife, which won't be attributed to your efforts, however, if I may say that in such a way, but to the demand of your wife. In truth, she feels no love in herself for you, because she only married you because she wanted to free herself from the conditions of her own family, 
where she was under the terrible thumb of her mother. But now, I would like to reiterate that we do not want you to publish these statements of our conversation in the contact reports. It is necessary that you are really silent about this. And furthermore, in our conversations that we carry on from now on, there should also always only be talk as if everything with your wife is in order, of which you do, indeed, say ever more frequently that in terms of the mission, she only reveals her art of acting. For this reason, along with other reasons, I had a look into the future and saw your marriage dissolution. I wasn't allowed to penetrate into the inner world of thought of your wife, however, in accordance with our directives, in order to investigate her true, most secret things, so I always had to rely on and still have to rely on, what your wife really sees outwardly and what I can see and determine with regard to my open inspections. And in any case, these inspections indicate to me something other than what you report to me more and more frequently about your wife, that she just theatrically deceives you as well as the group members and also harms you all financially as well as damages your belongings, which she also does with respect to the mission. And as long as I, father, or Quetzal cannot recognize this from her outward nature, so long must we rely on what we can determine about your wife on a purely external basis. We do, indeed, know that she unlawfully passes on internal group information by telephone as well as directly verbally and also through sound recordings and letters to the outside to non-members, as we already told you before, but if we would reveal this through an open conversation report in the group, then hatred, vindictiveness, and injustice, etc. would arise, which would jeopardize the entire mission. For this reason, I also haven't informed Father and Quetzal about the concerns, and indeed, also not about what you report to me more and more often about your wife. If the two of them would be informed, then they would demand that the group members also be informed about everything, which would be very imprudent, however, in my opinion, because through that, the group could be dissolved and the mission could be destroyed, as I know from a probability calculation. Consequently, we must tread a different path, which consists in your wife removing herself from the group association by her own initiative and going her separate way. You can be unconcerned, however, because in the end, everything will, in fact, arise in the center and change for the better in such a way that the mission will begin to bear its fruit. In the mid-90s, your wife will already remove herself and depart from the center, whereby you will also get rid of all of her abusiveness and altercations as well as the hassle of her dishonesty, by what means she disadvantages you, the group members, and the mission for her own profit, as you always explain. It. Billy says you can calmly ease off on telling me what I say about my wife, because everything corresponds to the truth and indeed even if you still question it. Semyaza says the whole thing isn't questioned by me, rather, I'm only saying that so far, I could not verify these issues with your wife because I'm not allowed to penetrate into her inner world of thought. But in the future, I will strive to give my very specific and special attention to all external matters, in order to. Billy says you will do well in that. Excuse my interrupting, but it will really be good if you take a good, close look at my wife sometime in the external things. With that, you will experience your nasty surprises. Semyaza says that concerns purely private matters, which we should not inspect. Billy says that is quite right, but I would hereby like to ask you to take a thorough, closer look at these things sometime, even if they are of a private nature. Semyaza says I can only do that within a certain framework and also only with your permission. Billy says which you have with this. Semyaza says then, nevertheless, I wouldn't like to talk about your wife disparagingly even if everything is confirmed. But now listen further in the upcoming years, a certain number of predetermined group members will join the group, especially in the coming 80s and 90s. These group members will contribute a lot to the success of all things of the mission as well as with the further development of the center, etc. To be sure, most of them will not be strictly active in a work-related manner, such as is the case with the recent group members. 
Some of the new members will find various excuses to keep themselves away from strict works and operations. But nonetheless, the majority will make very good use of themselves. And it is to be said to you that your state of health will deteriorate very much more, because unfortunately, you demand much too much of yourself, and to be sure, in terms of your many-sided manual activities as well as the settlement of disputes and the presentations, etc. Consequently, in the early morning of the 4th of November, 1982, you will suffer a very serious and even life-threatening health collapse, from which you will recover, however, as far as possible, by your own tremendous efforts and by your incredibly strong will. Unfortunately, this isn't to be prevented because you don't let yourself be helped by us and, on the other hand, because the things in the group are such that you cannot relax but could only move even more towards your collapse. Also, the physicians won't be able to help you then, so you yourself must endeavor around a suitable medical treatment. By the year 1989, you will, nevertheless, have brought it so far that you will have recovered as far as possible, but you will then depend on medicines, without which you will then no longer be able to exist. You also won't be able to do manual activities anymore, consequently, the relevant works will have to be taken over and carried out by the group members. But the whole thing will also have its advantages, because you'll then ultimately be able to recover at least physically and turn yourself to your written and oral teaching work, in which case you will then do and pull off much more than what your task requires. But you also shouldn't disclose all this, neither to the group members nor to the public. Also for my part, I remain silent towards my father and towards Quetzal, for on the one hand, I wouldn't like to burden the two with problems and worries, and on the other hand, they would take steps, by which you would have to inform the group members officially, which wouldn't turn out well, However, because through that, a dissolution of the group would take place, as I calculated. In addition, I know from my look into the future that everything will come into order again, even if everything should continue to be overly excessive and there should be further talk of the breaking off of the contacts. But, as I said, nothing of this may leak through, and to be sure, neither to the group members nor to Father or Quetzal. This requires, however, that in the future, I must speak in the old manner and must mention things, about which only you and I know that the things are meant differently. This is, Billy says so to speak, a two-person conspiracy between the both of us. Semyaza says it probably has to be interpreted in such a way, yes. The whole thing is necessary, however, in order to prevent the fallible group members from being complacent because otherwise, they wouldn't dedicate themselves to any efforts, in terms of an improvement. And if silence is maintained, then everything will, in fact, come into order again. So even if I have to play an unpleasant negative role in our conversations in the future, in order to preserve the mission and for the sake of order for the group members, and accordingly have to lead speeches and make statements that speak of an ending of the contacts, then you must always know that such statements only serve for the preservation of the mission and for the transformation of the fallible group members, while it is, however, already certain that through this, the mission will still come to fruition and that the group will not only remain existing but also expand itself and perceive its task. My actions are the only way, unfortunately, to make all fallible ones reflective, as well as all proper group members, so that they still come to reason and begin to act in the right manner. And thus, in conversations with Father and Quetzal, neither you nor I can betray ourselves, that we will both continue to play the unpleasant role. If Father and Quetzal would, in fact, know of my look into the future and the conspiracy of us two, as well as the good outcome of the whole thing and the unpleasant banter between the group members and us, then they would seriously consider expressing everything openly to the group members and instructing you to inform them about everything in detail. This is because Father and Quetzal are so open and proper that they never agree to such a conspiracy, as the two of us have now decided. An open talk of the actualities, as I have mentioned them would, however, lead to the detriment of all as well as to the dissolution of the group and the mission, 
because illogically, the group members no longer strove in a good and progressive form to change themselves for the better and to bring everything in order. Billy says you are very brainy in terms of psychology, girl. During your remarks, I considered everything thoroughly and came to the same result as you. Semyaza says thank you but I am also well versed in psychology, for this is one of my special areas of expertise. Billy says aha. Then have we now discussed all these things? Semyaza says sure. Billy says then can I still ask another question? Semyaza says sure. Billy says good. As Quetzal explained, in the year 13384 BC, an icy small moon was torn out of Jupiter's orbit by the destroyer and hurled out into space. Actually, this small moon should have concerned the comet captured by Jupiter. This should now be whizzing through space and should ultimately find its way back to the planet Jupiter. Do you know anything about this? Semyaza says yes, sure. The small moon mentioned by Quetzal and you actually was, at a very early time, a comet, which was forced by the planet Jupiter into an orbit around it and which was then actually torn away by the destroyer and brought on a millennia-long course that will bring it back to Jupiter in the year 1994, between the 10th and 25th of July. It will first appear as a comet, only to explode into about 20 pieces, when it approaches the planet Jupiter. Then, within a number of hours, these fragments will all be attracted to the planet one after another and will crash down on it. Billy says then, the comet will surely be discovered by our astronomers. Semyaza says that will certainly be the case. But now, my friend, we should end our conversation for today. Billy says just one last question, also about Jupiter which does have many dozens of moons but only a few large ones and more smaller structures, which actually aren't really moons and which haven't been discovered yet, precisely because they are so small. There are, indeed, about a hundred of these, if I am not mistaken, or even more, and these are actually debris and other smaller objects captured by Jupiter. Will these also be discovered soon and may I speak of that? Semyaza says you should be silent about that at least for another 20 years. But in any event, these satellites of Jupiter will be discovered by the earthly astronomers. Billy says well, that's it. Then till we meet again, if you must go now. Semyaza says till we meet again. The End